<clears throat> and here we go, dig down. Uh, roll up, roll up, plates and gentlemen. One man went to mow. Here we go. Here I am. Uh, two sessions today. Uh, the first session of commences, and your company is required. Uh, so I'm available. Avail yourself of the session. One man went to mow. The eagle was not. Another savior. Holy, 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 well, this is Mobier. This is dedicated to the gallant heroes of the Nigerian Biafra War and IPO families all over the world. I remember the Nigerian Biafra War mm, in the thickness of the Biafra genocide. One man revived the vanishing hope to life. Ah, let the great be around me to fight. And they were singing out. Holy, 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 And there it is, the holy holy song from the uh, from the east. So the holy holy song. So holy holy, as guys, I bring you this. Nigerian Central Bank illegally printing money for Buhari government. 
whilst pretending to be fighting inflation. Kingsley Mogalu, a former central banker himself. Uh, Mogalu, who contested to be Nigerian president in 2019 under the platform of the Young Progressive Party, YPP, and lost to President Mohamed Buhari, regretted that the nation's apex bank, which is supposed to check the excesses of the Ministry of Finance and political elite, has compromised under the leadership of our Godwin Emefile. The former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Professor Kingsley Mogalu, has blamed the nation's worsening economy on the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, describing her fiscal man mismanagement of Nigeria as a calamity. Mogalu, who contested to be Nigeria's president in 2019 under the platform of the Young Progressive Congress YPP and lost to President Mohamed Buhari, regretted that the nation's apex bank, which is supposed to check the excesses of the Ministry of Finance and the political elite, has compromised under the leadership of our Godwin Emefele. The Anambra-born political economist, who took to his Twitter handle at, Mog at, Kingsley, at Mogalu Kingsley, accused the current leadership of the CBN as an appendage of the government rather than being independent. It sees itself as a quasi-fiscal agent, using its ability to print money for the government of the day, Mogalu said. He said the wheels have come off the Nigerian economy, which he described as a victim of mismanaged fiscal space and a deeply compromised central bank that has sold its soul to politicians and private sector profiteers. Mogalu stated uh, in the tweet, it is not often I agree with Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, not because of anything, but because I fundamentally disagree with what I consider her fiscal mismanagement of Nigeria. But at least she recently gave an honest assessment of how broke uh, Nigeria is now. Uh, as for my dear beloved uh, Central Bank and its governor, the less said the better. For, uh, for that, uh, I believe, um, as for my dear beloved Central Bank of Nigeria and its governor, the less said the better. For that, I believe, for that, I believe, is the ultimate calamity. Why? Normally, the finance minister directly answers to the president. Where a federal government is not uh, reform-oriented, as in the President Obasanjo era, the minister can be subjected to negative political pressure if he or she is not strong, respected, an accomplished personality like a Okonjewela, of whom politicians were wary because she wasn't exactly into one chance bus travel, a masquerading as fiscal management. Uh, moreover, President Obasanjo protected her and her reforms. President uh, Jonathan strongly backed her, even if parallel other activities that were kept beyond her remit e.g. the petrol sector, went on, but where a, a central bank is truly independent, as we were in our time, it can serve as a check in the nation, in the nation's interest uh, on the worst excesses of the profil, profligle, profi, I, I always struggle with this word, uh, uh, on the worst excesses of the profligate politician that often dot Nigeria's landscape of high-level political appointments. In the current scenario, the leadership of the central bank evidently does not believe in the concept of central bank independence in its operation. Rather, the bank asks how high once the president says jump. It sees itself as a quasi-fiscal agent using its ability to print money for the government of the day. This is what the rent seekers and parasites that benefit from this situation justify as on orthodox central banking, as in, of course, central banking in Zimbabwe and Venezuela. Well, what's the result today? Between a mismanaged fiscal space and a deeply compromised central bank that has sold its soul to politicians and private sector profiteers, the wheels have come off the Nigerian economy. If the central bank, bank is busy printing money 
for the government through Ill illegal ways and means lending and then pretends to be fighting inflation uh, by a belated uh, by belated rises of monetary policy rates and what another commentator aptly terms as dubious cash reserve ratio policy on commercial banks how can we fight inflation successfully please don't tell me that inflation is a global phenomenon just as some willing mischievously and ignorantly uh, now please don't tell me that inflation is a global phenomenon just as some will mischievously and ignorantly refer to the level of debt to GDP ratios of advanced productive economies. There is a difference between real global challenges and, and you and us fundamentally killing our economy with our own hands in the service of corruption, vested interest, and incompetent political leaders. So on and on it goes, but essentially the upthrust of it is that the Mifele is just printing money for Buari and tell you, telling you that inflation is going on. So that was Kingsley Mogalu, the deputy uh, 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 CBN governor once upon a time, but his boss at that time, Sanusi, also speaks to that space. Nigeria in deeper mess, uh, Sanusi uh, raises alarm. Nigeria is in deeper mess now than it was in 2015. Former governor of the central bank, CBN Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, has alarmed. The former emir of Kano, who expressed sadness at the current economic and security situation in Nigeria, raised alarm on Thursday when he spoke at the Akejide Adioshun Foundation AAS Leadership Colloquium and Awards Chapter 7 held in Lagos. Speaking on the theme, Are Good Leaders Scarce in Nigeria, Sanusi said that 2023 will be worse compared to what we had in 2015, adding that in spite of the current mess, the Buhari administration expects to be rewarded with appreciation after leaving office. Speaking as the special guest of honor, Sanusi said, the levels of poverty levels of insecurity, the rate of inflation, the unstable exchange rate, the lack of power should worry everybody. This is the only oil producing country that is grieving at the moment when oil prices have gone up as a result of the Russia-Ukraine war. Our total revenue is not able to service our debt. And if anybody does not understand that we are in a complete mess, we are. We are in a deep hole. We were in a deep hole in 2015. And between 2015 and now, we have been digging ourselves into a deeper hole. We thought we had a big problem in 2015, but 2015 is nothing compared to what will happen in 2023. We have terrorism, banditry, inflation, unstable exchange rates, exchange rate, and the worst thing is that those in leadership actually think we're going to thank them when they leave office. There is no change. There is no sense of urgency. If you are running a company and your sales revenue cannot pay interest, you know you are bankrupt. When the total revenue of the federal government cannot service, uh, when the total revenue of the federal government cannot service debt, debt. These are the kinds of questions we need to ask and the reality is that there are so many nigerians who given the opportunity will do well but they simply cannot contest in that space what is our vision for nigeria do we have a vision of one country do we have a vision of one united country that that lives peacefully with itself diverse multicultural multi-religious but one and these things are not self-contradictory. Where did we get it wrong? Well, we got it wrong, of course, with our Buhari. We did once upon a time have a vision like a, like a, a, a Sanusi was uh, just describing there, but I'm not sure that that vision is still held by anyone. And I don't think that vision can really rest in anybody because the eyes of the Nigerian person has been opened. So your, your eyes has been opened both to your ethnicity and your religion, and you cannot unlearn what you've already learned. So that's just the thing. Leaders after leaders, most of those 
who have ruled did not have a vision for a united Nigeria. How would they, how would you like to be remembered after eight years as president, governor, minister, eight years as governor of Central Bank? How would you like history to remember you? They have not thought about it. The vast, major, the vast majority of those in office have a vision that is limited to the next election. It is to win. And when you won, you reach a destination, not a journey. In a veiled reference to the controversy over a Muslim Muslim ticket, Sanusi said, we are going into an election. What are we talking about? North and South, Muslim and Christian. Is that really what we're concerned about? Does it matter if you have a government made up of a uh, uh, does it matter if you have a government made up of a hundred percent incompetent Muslims or a hundred percent incompetent Christians? Will that government work? Yes, we must think of diversity and we must begin to think of fairness in this country and balance not create any tensions. How many people can go to a political party and bring out 10 million? How many people can go to a political party and bring out tens of millions of dollars to pay delegates? Where are you going to get the money? And when you get the money, assuming you raise it from people, how are you going to look at the people when you are in office and do the right thing? You are already finished. You've already sold your conscience to get there. Or when a nation is ready to sell itself, when the poor on the streets are ready to be given 5,000, 2,000 and cast a vote for 2,000 today and give up education, give up health care and give up security for the next four years, then maybe we understand what Chief Awolowo meant when he said a nation gets the leadership it deserves. We, as Nigerians, need to ask these questions. People say to me, why do you keep criticizing people? Why do you keep talking about public policy? And I say I was a public officer and I have a record. Talk about my own record. I met inflation at 15.6, left, left it at 7.8. I stabilized the exchange rate. I saved the banks. I transformed the payment system. I have my record, and because I had the opportunity to serve, I served and left the record. So I earned. So I've earned the right to criticize any public officer who is incompetent, and I will call him out. Akiti Day at the Ocean Foundation is a non-profit organization focused on charity in the spheres of free quality education and free quality medical outreach the event was its seventh which is uh the event was its seventh which also marked the birthday of its founder akejide adeoso husband of olu bami bamiwo adeosho the secretary to the state government uh or, or, or your state so that that is uh <clears throat> That is a Lamundi Sonusi, of course, unpacking Malam Buhari as ever. But quite pointedly, quite, quite notedly, he's uh, telling us that, uh, curiously, uh, the Aboki will actually expect people to be thankful when, 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 when we finally see the back of him. There will be party... There will be parties uh, on the streets when, when Aboki from Daura leaves office. There will be... Uh, how many lives will, still, will he still take before he leaves office is the thing? because he's on a killing spree now. And how much more would they lose? Because they're still going to borrow, they're still going to do another last minute borrowing of about five, seven billion dollars to loot their pension takeaway, uh, their retirement package. So there's still another set of borrowing for the final looting. Um, uh, all right, so curious goings on in uh, uh, your state. Return of schools to missionaries. Uh, you shall sleep no more. Islamic group uh, gives Makinde quit notice. So Makinde giving quit notice. Uh, Muslim rights concern, Murik, on Friday, gave the Oyo State Governor Sheyi Makinde notice to quit the government house by 2023. The quit notice was given over the governor's plans. Uh, let's, start, let's take that again. 
Muslim rights, uh, Muslim rights concern, Murik, on Friday gave the Oyo State Governor Sheyemake Day notice to quit government house by 2023. The quit notice was given over the governor's plan to return schools to missionaries, which was announced yesterday. The quit notice was contained in a press statement issued by the director of Murik. The statement reads, Governor Sheyema Kende of Oyo State yesterday announced his plans to return public schools to missionaries. We received this announcement with a pinch of salt. It is a blow below the belt. It is arbitrary, a betrayal of trust, and a most provo provocative move. Coming at a time Muslim liberation struggle is at its peak, the move is most unwise, audacious, and insensitive. It, it better not be. Makinde should perish the thought. The governor is acting the script written by the Christian Association of Nigeria. It will fail. Those schools are our common patrimony. He cannot give them out just like that. After the government has spent billions of Naira of Oyo State taxpayers' money on adding more and renovating purchasing equipment and maintaining the infrastructure, paying teachers salaries, etc., for the past uh, 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 50 years. The idea is to perpetuate the suppression of Muslim children in public schools by claiming that the school belong to missionaries. Those are new imperialists seeking all means to remain relevant, powerful, and dominant. Yet the so-called missionary schools were built on land belonging to our Muslim forefathers who were deceived by the Christian colonialists to... Uh, 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 Yet the so-called missionary schools were built on land belonging to our Muslim forefathers who were deceived by the Christian colonialists into giving out the land gratis in most cases. So gratis means, of course, free of charge. Uh, uh, apart from the land which was given free, our Muslim forefathers also paid tax into the coffers of the colonialists to build the schools. Nobody should try and pull the wool over our eyes. The difference between the colonial government and the missionaries is like six and half a dozen. Peter was robbed to pay Paul. The colonialists collected our hard-earned uh, hard, uh, hard -earned money and gave the missionaries. It was the mother of all treacheries when the colonialists gave the schools missionary names after completing the buildings. Not uh, only that, they turned round to bite the finger that fed them by rejecting Muslim children who refused to change their names to Christian uh, nomenclatures. Uh, majority of the Muslims had to succumb. First, Abdul Rashid became Richard, Yusuf became Joseph, uh, Ishak became Isaac, and Mariam became Mary. Anybody who observes the trajectory of Mackenzie's administration will know that he came with the sole agenda of subjugating Muslims in Oyo State to the whims and, camp and caprices of Christian Association of Nigeria. But the Muslims of Oyo State will resist this with every legitimate means at their disposal. There must be consequences for irresponsibility and reckless leadership. There will be peaceful rallies and protests until Makinde rescinds his decision. The Muslim youths in the state have taken Makinde's plan to school. Uh, the Muslim youths in the state have taken Makinde's plan to return schools to missionaries as a confrontation. Already, the Muslim Student Society of Nigeria has fired the first salvo. Makinde has miscalculated. He assumes that his very few contract-seeking Muslim business partners control the mus Muslim community in Oyo State. He will soon learn the truth. Makinde is in the habit of snatching from the Muslim what belongs to them. Yet he wants Muslim in the state to continue to cooperate with his administration. He lives in self-delusion with his divide et empira as, his, as he hoodwinks any infantesimal minority of Muslim dealers, uh, that should be leaders, I suspect, and ignores the uh, Muslim dealers and ignores the real Muslim leaders. 
So I hope this doesn't go on for too long because this seems like uh, summonizing somewhat, uh, just uh, test beating. Uh, with this ill-advised announcement, he has betrayed those few stomach infrastructure Muslim dealers who always claimed they needed to be near the governor. Makide will soon know his fate. Muslim will teach him an electoral lesson. We expect all your governors to take a cue from what happened to Bolaige in 1983. Nobody plays with Muslim interest in your state and gets away with it. Makinde started by toying with the uh, Hydra holiday, which his Muslim predecessors gave us. He also refused to issue any circular on hijab to date. He marooned his Muslim deputy governor for three good years until the latter eventually uh, impeached and replaced with a Muslim by name deputy. She Kinde's anti-Muslim agenda cannot stomach the idea of a genuine Muslim deputy. Also, it looks as though this is a uh, this is long-standing and deep-sitting within the Oyot state space. We hereby give the Eleyi of Agodi notice to quit Agodi government house uh, come 29th of May 2023. The Muslim dealers masquerading as Muslim leaders and romancing our traducers are for contracts will not be able to save him. Makinde's days in the government house are numbered. He has murdered sleep. Uh, from this day to the 29th of May 2023, Makinde shall sleep no more. Uh, we advise him to start loading his backpack with his most essential commodities from today. Murik calls on Muslims in Oyo State to possess their possessions. We shall all face Allah Yan, uh, I wonder, attempt that, to report what we did for Islam and the Muslims. How did we meet the Umar of Muhammad? Uh, and so it goes on. So, so the, total, the totality of it, of course, a nonsense. Um, uh, uh, Makende essentially are handing schools to missionaries who we know are quite adept at managing schools. And the uh, Murik, who, who likes uh, every opportunity to make noise, making noise as they often do. So let me go to this one. Uh, a follow on from the obituary. Uh, from uh, Omar um, um, Sheye, um, so uh, the, the death threats coming from the Ipobians and the obedience has not gotten to the point now. Uh, obituary, don't harm our son, Omar Sheye, uh, um, um, Sheye's family pleads. So the, the family of the journalist are now uh, pleading for their son's life, uh, for their son's life from the obedience and the Ipobians for reasons that uh, the guy wrote an article that is not complimentary to Peter B. Our uh, obituary, don't harm our son, or Marseille's family, please. The patriarch of Omaseye family in Wari, in, uh, not Wari, but Wari, the patriarch of the Omaseye family in Wari, in, <laughs> the patriarch of the Omaseye family in Wari Delta State, Professor Jim uh, Omaseye, has appealed to those who disagree with the art article titled Obituary by Sam Omaseye to jettison threats to harm their son. Professor Omaseye, whilst noting that Nigerians are in dire need of positive change, asserted the negative reactions that trailed the article published on the nation's, Mon uh, on the nation's Monday, August the 1st edition, is a result of the high level of poverty insecurity amongst other menaces facing the country. Reacting to the development on Friday on phone, he noted that it is not out. Uh, reacting to the development on Friday, he noted that it is not out of place for people to disagree with a journalist opinion, pointing out that the writer, like every other person, is entitled to his opinion. Uh, he said, uh, I want to react to the negative reactions. I want to react to the negative reactions that is coming from many quarters as a result of the article obituary, which was written by Omar Saye, who is a member of my family. The, re the reaction that is trailing that publication, I believe, 
is as a result of what is happening in the country. The state of insecurity, the high level of poverty, the suffering of so many people, and as a result of this, people are looking for change, whether from the right or from the left. The regular parties, ha uh, the regular parties have people who have disappointed a lot of people in the country as a result of these challenges, and people are looking for a change. Whatever it is that Sam has written, it is his personal opinion to which he's entitled, but he should not be threatened by anyone because he's doing his job as a journalist. As a journalist, it is not all the time that what journalists say, everybody agrees with. Therefore, we want to say from the perspective of the family that he should not be threatened or harmed by anyone. We plead with the public and those who disagree with him to not do anything that will be detrimental to him. So there it is right there. For writing uh, an article crit critical of Peter B, this family is now pleading for the life of their son. So that is where we are in Nigeria uh, now. But for a life that can no longer be pleaded for because it is now being taken. So to this one, so just beat police officer to death in Lagos. So here it is. Uh, it's not the first time we've come across this headline. Uh, so just beat police officer to death in Lagos. The police in Lagos State says yet to be identified soldiers beat one of his officers to death. Uh, Benjamin Hudeni, the police spokesperson in the state, confirms the incident uh, via his Twitter handle on Friday. We are working with the at HQ Nigerian Army authorities to resolve this issue and get back our officer, our arms, and ammunition, uh, he wrote. RIP to our fallen hero. You absolutely did not have to die. According to correspondent, the incident occurred on Wednesday in Ojo military cantonment in uh, Lagos. Soldiers from the cantonment reportedly dragged two uh, police officers who were working as traffic wardens to their barracks. The third officer managed to escape. A source who spoke to correspondents said the soldiers were driving against traffic and were stopped by the police officers. When they did not have their way, the officers were said to have pounced on the officers and beaten them severely and kidnapped two of them. The source further said, when the soldiers noticed that one of the abducted officers became unconscious, they decided to take him to their hospital at the, at the cantonment where he eventually died. The soldier, the, uh, the army in a statement on Friday also confirmed the incident. The attention of the 81st Division has been drawn to a story online over the unfortunate incident that occurred between some soldiers and policemen around Ojo in Lagos, res resulting in the loss of the life of a police officer, Olaniyi Oshoba, an acting deputy director of the 81st Division, said in a statement, the division is already in touch with the Lagos State Police Command to resolve the matter. This is incident is highly regrettable, given the division's disposition and zero tolerance for any misconduct. Mr. Olan Mr. Olaniyi uh, said that a board of inquiry to unravel the circumstances surrounding the incident has been set up. At the end of the investigation, anyone found culpable will be made to full, uh, at the end of the investigation, anyone found culpable will be made to face the full wrath of the disciplinary provisions. So so, so there it is right there. So uh, they said that they have zero tolerance for this sort of behavior. But if they had zero tolerance for this sort of behavior, then those guys would not have done it. So them doing it tells you that that is not the first time that they have done uh, things like that. So so there it is right there. And there it is right there. Uh, I, I wonder if we should do a Peter Beast story. Uh, maybe we shouldn't, or maybe we should. Um, always tricky going to Peter B. That's just the thing. Because anytime you go to Peter B, it's only to debunk him. But this, this storyline was actually submitted by one of the... Uh, 
one of the subscribers who, as I often say, if you see a story that you want us to cover, you submit it to me via Instagram. And if, if I feel it's sufficiently strong enough, I certainly will present it. Uh, Peter will be caught lying again on TV. So I'm not quite sure. Uh, do I want to do I want to cover this? Uh, let's see. Yes, uh, Peter B tells so many things that so easily debunked is just the thing. Uh, okay, let me just bring it. So Peter B caught lying again on TV. Uh, Labour Party presidential candidate Peter B has been caught again making fallacious claims about the value of Nigeria's export. Twice he was caught claiming that the country exports less than $30 billion of goods and services in 2021, underperforming smaller African peers, such as Morocco. Obi argued that Nigeria was not a producing country and has a weak export base, uh, causing dollar scarcity in the economy. However, the French news agency AFP, after fact-checking him, found that his statement was false. Official data shows annual export from Nigeria have exceeded 30 billion for well over over a decade. Um, so official data shows annual export from Nigeria have exceeded 30 billion uh, dollars for well over a decade. Uh, Obi first made the claim during an hour-long interview that was aired on July the 6th, 2022, by Nigerian broadcaster Arise TV. Morocco is about uh, 36 million. Their export last year was about $50 billion, Obi said. In our own uh, export, with oil included, it is under $30 billion and we are 200 million people. Morocco didn't export any oil. About two weeks ago, he repeated the claim during a visit to Abia State. Nigeria is a country with 900 and 23,000 square kilometers of land and a population of 200 million people. God blessed us with oil and other resources. We have over 100 million people living in poverty, Obi said in the second interview. But to show that we are not a, a producing country, last year, our total, our total export, including oil, was less than $30 billion dollars that is why we can't find a dollar today. Indeed, Nigeria is the largest exporter of crude oil in Africa, the commodity which accounted for more than two-thirds total exports in 2023 as the country's biggest source of uh, dollar inflow. However, oil output fell in the first uh, five months of uh, Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> However, oil output fell in the first five months of 2022, uh, raising fresh concerns about the country's economic output and currency stability. According to the World Bank, the value of Nigeria's total export in 2019 was uh, $53.6 uh, $53 billion. Uh, Micro trends even estimated it to be $63.6 billion. Oil and gas accounted for $41 billion of the figure. Morocco exported goods worth $47 billion in the same year. In 2021, Nigeria shipped uh, $47.6 billion worth of goods and services around the globe. So, so uh <laughs> It's just, uh, I don't know, man. So so the facts never back up anything that Peter Obey has to say anyway. He just seems to speak in abstract. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, there it is. Uh, you know, we always try to avoid the Peter Obey space because anytime you go you go with the Peter Obey narrative, it never argues well with fact mm -hmm. and truth. Easily debunks. And then when you try to debunk him, and then suddenly it takes a, it takes a different hue and it goes in so, some sort of like a tribal ethnic narrative when the guy tells you to go and verify and then you check and you find that the whole thing is a is, is a lie you know a, a lot of lies in that space that, that's just it a lot of lies 
uh all, all, all right so 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 to the panel uh uh ajale koko i see you uh saki father i see you uh uh baba kore i see you so good to have you gentlemen let me come straight to you for saki father to see if you are ready to go saki are you ready yeah all right brilliant to have you saki we didn't see you yesterday uh so so, so saki father rejoins us and this narrative then of the soldiers beating up a police officer to death this is not the first time we've come across this but having the temerity for, for stopping them from driving against traffic and that is what cost the guy his life your take on that Saki? those those soldiers should be brought to book you know that is very excessive and uh, it shows the kind of society we we are living in like can you hear me yeah perfectly carry on okay so uh, those soldiers should be identified and they should uh, they should face the wrath of law you know uh, it's it portrays the kind of society we live you know where impunity anybody can do anything with every sense of uh, every sense of alacrity without uh, uh, being called to book, you know. Uh, if soldiers are, are the way they should be, they should they should be in the forest fighting Boko Haram and those bandits. How can you beat up a civilian, a policeman, a force that is doing his work, you know, to the extent of uh, beating him up to death? That's very bad and uh, it's, it's very painful to to hear such news, you know. So I I I will advise the government to. Um, Saki, what 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 do you think will be going through those uh, soldiers' heads uh, when they are beating up that guy? Is it what what are, what what did they what are they saying he has done wrong to them? Yeah, he of course he has not done anything wrong to them. Well, you know, most of these soldiers, some of them, most of them, some of them are taking all these. Uh, Kai Kai. Uh, Kai Kai. <laughs> Kai Kai and uh, is it their hair and those mm. things, you know? So maybe they are not in their senses at that point and, and then they acted beyond levels. And they have been doing that. We see many cases where you see a soldier, you know, beating up uh, some people in a, maybe in a traffic, a traffic situation. To the extent of destroying people's uh, side bureaus and and those things, so Nigerian soldiers are not. I thought some of them behave as if they are not. They don't have manners. You, you, know. you know, you wonder if they train a lot of the security personnel that we have in Nigeria. Yeah, we, we, yeah. Are, we are we are we are sympathizing with the police officer now, but they don't really deserve that much sympathy because yeah, their not. own behavior <laughs> is is. I mean. <laughs> They will, a, they will slap you. They, uh, you uh, they just slap a grown-up person because they are holding a yeah. gun, and then you are thinking, "What do I do? Do I tackle him and risk getting shot?" And then suddenly you, you lose your masculinity as you are being slapped. I mean, <laughs> my God, that's another thing too. You know, so I think uh, the head of these forces, you know, should should uh, have a way of calling these people to to book. You know. You know, if this very person, these people that did this thing should be identified and government should not let them go scot free by any stretch of imagination. So if, if they are not called to book, many others will not learn from from this very scenario. In in the so, middle of it all, a human life is lost, by the way. A father, a, a husband, uh, a son, you know, a human life is yeah, not stopping that's you from it. driving against you that you are breaking the law. Yeah, that's it. You know. <laughs> so just some of them are some of them are just taking some Igbo and uh, those things. And I don't really know. Nigeria has a lot of problems. That is not, I don't know. I don't know what what is what has what has what has really cost us all these things. Everywhere you go in Nigeria is hotting. You go to security sector, it is hurting. You go to judiciary sector, you hear a lot of news, it is hurting. Yeah, there is no, I don't know, I don't know. In fact, I had Sulu, the way he was speaking one time in Ghana, when he went to one university in Ghana, and he said that he created an index 
to measure uh, and he added another index by which people should also use to measure the level of uh, economic development in a country some sort of that and he called that very index headline index he was the one that created it mm. headline index he said if you want to look at a country that is being prosperous every day look at the headline and see the percentage of negative headlines per day you know he now say that he has studied a lot of african countries on the basis of this headline index and between 2015 and 2000 he delivered that uh, speech in 2019 he said that between 2015 and 2019 that nigeria is top in the negative headlines on daily basis when he collected a lot of the headlines you know that nigeria is top in the negative headlines and then he now said that he tried to study the relationship between economic growth and this headline index and he found out through some regression analysis uh, that there is a negative relationship between uh the headline they had the negative headlines and the economic growth so as a country increase as a country goes up in terms of the scale on the headline the negative headline you know there is a, a, every tendency that economic growth keeps on dropping because he studied nigeria and other countries you know so nigeria is really hot everywhere you go you see negative headlines you know, every day, if, out of these things you've read today, if I ask you here on this platform, which of these headlines is positive, you know, <laughs> I would say visually none of them, you know, about Nigeria today. The headlines, those things you read today, you know, which of uh, the uh, news. Um, um, Saki, I want to do something. I, I want to share a screen. Uh, if, if you're able to say it, fine. But really for the benefit of uh, everybody. Uh, just so... Um, just so you can see. Uh, so uh, anybody that is in the screen now, if you're ever wondering where I get the news from, this is where I get the news from. So you can see, th this is the, these are the most read news uh, relating to Nigeria on this platform. So I usually get the news from here, what is trending amongst Nigerians. But So that this is in the last uh, three hours. But if you go to the latest section, this is, to the last five minutes, the latest news coming out of Nigeria. So if you are talking about positive news, there, there are no positive news. It's not like I, I go looking for bad news. So if you go through the headlines as they are, as they are on your screen, there's nothing that's really... Police dismiss a viral video of attack on uh, Yola custom oh. complex. Central bank stands on Muslim, Muslim ticket, not of God. Uh, Nigeria struggles with basic needs. Oh. US, so, so it's just bad news all the way. So it's not that I don't go looking. That if you look, if I scroll all the way through, it's just bad news. So it's not that I go looking for bad news for sensationalism. It's just all the news coming up. It's bad, like you said. So back to you, Saki. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you, if you if you had if you if you have time, I think maybe make out time to to watch that uh, presentation. Very fantastic presentation he mm -hmm. made uh, in Ghana. He went to commemorate with Ghanaians on the loss of. Is it is this recent or back? No, in the that day? was that was 2019, when he was making analysis, comparison mm -hmm. between among African countries, you know, and uh, he he said that much in West Africa, and he by every indices he presented that Nigeria was almost the last, you know, so maybe. Anytime you have to, maybe you can watch out that very video. You know? He went to, uh, the, I think he was, uh, he went on a keynote speech to, there was one economist in Ghana who was former CBN governor in Ghana that died. So they called him, you know, to, to say something, uh, to present some kind of thing. So, you know, in one school in Ghana. So, uh, you know, I, I watched that very little and I, I came to realize that those indices, you know, are actually characteristic of Nigeria, you know. So, I don't know. Everywhere uh, you go uh, in Nigeria, uh, it, it's hot. 
Uh, all right. Let hot. me take you. Let me take you to another space that is equally hot. In Nigerian central bank illegally printing uh, money for Buhari government whilst pretending to be fighting uh, inflation. So uh, this is uh, Kingsley Mogalu, of course. And if anybody should know what is going on within the banking space, especially at, at Central Bank, it will be Kingsley Mogalu. Nigerian Central Bank illegally printing money for Buhari government whilst pretending to be fighting inflation. So if you have just print, printing money and pumping it into, uh, into the economy, uh, you don't have to be an economist to know that uh, that is going to lead to not only keep if inflation, but very quickly to hyperinflation. So voodoo yes. economics are MFA style. <laughs> that guy, that guy is really that he did he even do something like any knowledge of some a course like economics before? Like did he study like you know what uh, like somebody like Sunudo is an economist, somebody like uh, Sadusi is an economist, somebody like uh, Morgan, for instance, is also an economist. So I'm just asking that MFL, does he have uh, any knowledge of economics, you know, before becoming the central bank governor? Because I I seem not to understand why the way he's managing that CBA. And I also seem not to understand why he, he started got... banking and finance. Yeah, you can imagine. You know, how can you study only banking and financing and you are heading at a you are heading an agency whose role is to is to regulate, you know, uh, is to control uh, and manage monetary policies in Nigeria, you know, and also regulate uh, uh, like majorly to do like most of like much of monetary policies in Nigeria, and you expect the person to to be doing very 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 well. Well, so, but at the same time, I wonder why Buhari government can still retain such person till this point. Is it that CBN governors cannot be sacked? Is no, they can sack. Purpose? They can sack him. It it serves their purpose. It's the short yeah. answer to that. Now, so, that's very bad. You know, how can you be printing money and popping it into the system? Even somebody in the secondary school, we know that those days they would tell us that. Uh, Whenever there is too too much money pursuing too, you, you you know what they are doing is they they print this money and then they give it to Buhari and they they say they are securing it against our future earnings to come. But the earnings of the Nigerian space, as we know, is dwindling, and the yeah. rate that they are so so the monies that they are printing it has no cognizance with the, uh, the anticipation of earnings. So it's essentially just voodoo money. It's voodoo money. Voodoo money. This is this is very. It's, very it's like wrong. those babala was that they conjure up money. That's wrong. what they are doing. Our economy has really collapsed to by 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 economic managers that that don't know what they are actually doing. Mm -hmm. Is it the finance minister? Will you say that that person knows what is? She doing? she's not competent. You know that. Yeah. So uh -huh. I don't really know. You know, this administration has really. Has really caused a lot of damage. I'm very sure that these people that are even contested, I'm not sure that they know what they are going to meet. I'm not even sure that. You know that's after, the thing. <laughs> you, sorry, after yeah. this, after this administration, I don't know whether they even know what they're going to meet. This is a, a serious collateral damage in the system. You know, uh, it's 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 really. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The greatest mistake we made is to. I don't know who who sold us uh, this market that we bought. You know, I don't know. So, the so, so the minister of, of uh, the minister of the minister of finance, Zenab Ahmed um, Saki, she did accounting at a uh, Amedebelo University, and then she ended up as some uh, functionary in a. Uh, in the uh in, in, at, at some satellite office in uh, Kaduna State, and then from there she propelled to the Minister of Finance, a bit like uh the Minister of uh, Justice, who was some charge and bail lawyer in Kebbi State, and from being a charge and bail lawyer in Kebbi State, he became the Minister of uh, Justice in Nigeria. This is very very. <laughs> this, the, the, that Ministry of Finance should be headed by somebody that has portfolio of 
the likes of Okoji Uku, Wala then. Now, uh, wait the two. Now, look at Madame Mungozi and look at this character. Uh, uh, this, now, you are, telling is... them, you are saying they are doing the same job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> those are the characteristics of people you should. You don't just... Before you bring somebody to head that very uh, finance, you know, it is people like this guy that is working with uh, uh, this bank. Is the African Development Bank? Yeah, okay with me. Uh, hey, all those kind of people. Those are the kind of people you should you should you should strategically place in those kind of uh, uh, um, public offices. You know, not just to call somebody because the person is from your from your ethnic group or because the person is from your religion. You just uh, tell the person manage this sensitive position. So it's really uh, I I I wish I wish for this country. I wish for this country. I really wish for this country. Uh, uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. All right, you weep for the country, but I don't think you are weeping any deeper than Lamido Sanosi. You, you know, uh, the one thing, um, um, Saki, is if somebody is competent and they have the function, they, if they have the brain of how things should work, you know, it is usually that brain that propels him, them to do the right thing, not because they are honest or dishonest, but you yes. can see the big picture and you can see how things can work, and then you propel your resources to making it work. So that's the yes. difference between somebody like Sanusi, for instance, and these yes. are uh, 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 Zenab Ahmed or, or Malami or people like that. And he's telling us that, uh, you know, that save your tears for 2023 because you will cry even harder. He says Nigeria, by all of the metrics of measure, totally a thousand percent worse than uh, it was in 2015. And things were awful in 2015. And he's telling us then that these people... They are, they are, the biggest thing that alarms him is that he's telling us that the people in government, they are actually in their core of their being, thinking they are doing the, a good job and they will be applauded. So here it is now. Uh, you know, it's not going to get uh, better, is what Anusi is saying. It's going to get yeah. worse. I, I'm very sure that there are people in this government who are seeing things the way Sanusi is, is also seeing it. But, but I don't know whether they like it. Appears it is difficult for them to say it the way because they are still a government. If you tell me somebody like uh, Fashola, for instance, Fashola is a good man, and I know he's already seen this things, you know. But he, he, he since he's still in the government, there is no way he will come out and publicly say it this way the way this guy is saying it you know and that is why if you watch him now that is why i feel he's saying that after this service he will just go and retire Th thank you yeah. i was i was just about to interject and say exactly what you just yeah. said he says yeah. he wants to retire yeah. from politics at 60. Yeah. so it's yeah. too it's too disillusioned by the going on he just can't yes. bear it yeah that is what i feel that guy is very good so, but that, those are kind of people we need in this country if you imagine you have the likes of Fashola and the people of that likes, you know, that form this ministerial appointment, and then they now have a, a kind of president that listens. Imagine what will happen in Nigeria, you know? Imagine what will happen in Nigeria. So, but when you have the likes of these mediocre, you know, people that are not of these like minds, the people are, that are just there to loot somebody like Laya Mohamed. I wonder what where Laya Mohamed will be after after this uh, administration. And I wonder what he will have as like a historical antecedent, you know, or like a story to tell in the future, in the in the next generation to come. You know, so like I said, I commented on this when you were reading the Salu, uh, Lavido Sanusi's uh, write-up, you know. That is the best piece I've ever, I've ever, uh, uh, got, uh, I've ever uh, read, you know, in the last three months, you know. It's a very, very educative piece, straight to point, very, very honest critic criticism. But you will still see a lot of People that are going to go and attack him, like maybe verbal attack, trying to condemn what he has said, you know. And especially, we still see a lot of 
people from that other side, maybe the not others, try to, uh, why are you writing this? Why are you saying this kind of thing? But if you look at Lamido, the Lamido has always, he has always presented things from perspective of uh, of uh, a scholar that that doesn't that doesn't allow religion and ethnicity to be cloud his sense of judgment do, do you think it's better off to have left that emirate uh, i think it's better off yeah i think so too so he can speak freely now because we yeah, need him yeah. more like this than sitting on some throne uh yeah. but if you rank at day even when he was ABI, I think he was also speaking truth to power. That's why they got rid of him, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't really know. This administration uh, is really. I know that uh, somebody like Fashola, Fashola would be like regretting. Why am I a part of this administration? You know, because even if Fashola is good and he comes out today to say something the way it it ought to be. People will, be, will still be accusing him, but you were part of the government. Forgetting that in this government, there are some people who, who are still credible, you know? But it's just that the forces of the forces of the evil man in that government does not allow these people to let their light shine, you know? So I, 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 it's really, it's really, uh, the Nigerian story. Really you, you know, um, um, Saki, they say it takes uh, three cycles of uh, good governance. It, that it will only take three cycles of good governance to turn Nigeria around. So that's a two-time yeah. administration plus one. But yeah. imagine a government headed by maybe Fashola or Soludo. Yeah. But on that team, you have Fashola, Soludo, you yeah. have this Akemumi, you have yeah. Madame Ngozi, you have yeah. Femi Falano. You yeah. have people like that. Yeah. Because the country earns a lot of money, and it doesn't really take that yeah. much money to get what needs to be in place in place. Within imagine, within eight to twelve years, that country they just fix it. Imagine you make somebody like Fabi Falana, for instance. The the everybody <laughs> goes to jail now. Everybody, <laughs> everybody goes to jail. Even the president, if he's not careful, he will go to jail. He will everybody, go to jail. <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Everybody will just run away. The past people that served in the past government, they will they will just flee. Immediately they announce him. This is the what do we call it? Minister for Justice, Attorney General, Minister for Justice. Hey, even the Attorney General right now, the current one will run away. He will run outside the country immediately. <laughs> that is the kind of people we want, honestly. You know, the country is great. This country is great. We have the human resources. We have the best weather in the world. Nothing like earthquake. Nothing like tsunami. Nothing like all these natural disasters. The only Imagine disaster if we had natural disasters in, in, in Nigeria. People would just be dying. That was because I, I don't was, think we have an emergency system. That was what I was uh, talking one day. There was one day I, I started asking, suppose Nigeria is experiencing this kind of snow that some country experience. You know? Suppose they have this kind of snow. And then we don't have electricity, you know? And there is snow everywhere. How can people survive? How can this government manage this kind of disaster? You know, with this kind of level of corruption, people, a lot of people will die. I don't know whether, I've been trying to read this uh, Dutch disease. You know this thing they call Dutch disease, you know? Um, what, what is it, smallpox? No, Dutch disease, an economic, uh, terminology that was oh, developed oh, right. in the 70s. Like those diseases is like it's like resource cost, you know? Mm. Resource cost. That's why is it that uh, a lot of countries that have abundant natural resources, you know, that they have tendency to over depend on that natural resource to the extent that other countries that don't have this natural resource, you know, outgrows the returns of economy. So people were asking, why is it that with these natural resources, you know, most of those countries are still poor, you know? So I don't know whether... It's it laziness that... now. You you know, you know, desperation inspires creativity. Then, then yeah. and once you are ignited creatively, you know, uh, just where you are, um, um, Saki, it, I've often theorized why the, 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 uh, 
the Western climates have advanced so sharply ahead of the African space. And I, I've always thought that it's just the convenience of the the the, the sort of landscape that we have. In, in, in Africa, largely, the worst that will happen is it will rain. When it's raining, you can even go out without any, any clothing on. So the 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 terrain is is so blessed and easy. So you don't have to do much in order to survive. But look at the sort of places that these people went to conquer. Deep snow higher than your your person. So you continue to freeze to death until you find a solution to it. You continue to die until so it's from trying to tackle those harsh terrains that I feel they have evolved technologically. But we just have what rain and sun. So so we just we're just to we, we rested in the laziness of it all. That's just something I theorize about. Yeah, our yeah, yeah but uh, but uh, but another thing that makes me uh, worry is that we have the brains, because if you go to most of these uh, Western countries, you will see that they were part of their development was based on the level of uh, skilled migrants. And out of these skill migrants, there are many Africans, you know, doing great things over there. Why can't we repli replicate this same thing in most of the African countries? You know, you know. Look at Congo. Congo has almost the. I think they are, they say that Congo is uh, one of the countries in, in Africa that has. Uh, abundance of natural resources. I think they even have more than like. I think it's the most rich resource rich country but, on but, the planet. But, but yeah. look at the country. Look at the country. You know, look at the country. No light. You know, darkness everywhere. Darkness in the way they live. Darkness in their in their social life. Darkness in the economy. Darkness in 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 health. Everything. Every disease of development. They are dark. So I don't really know. I don't really know. You know? Oh, 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 all right. Let me yeah. take you to another space, uh, Sake, for reasons of time. Uh, let me take you to uh, 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 um, a, a place more local to myself, to my own home state or your state. And uh, uh, return of schools to missionaries, you shall sleep no more. Islamic group gives Makede quick notice. So Shei Makede now, because the example is that uh, the missionaries, they've always been, run, been, been able to run the school are better. Their structured approach, their discipline, just the a straightforward way of doing things. So he wants then for the, for the benefit of the students to return the schools back to the missionaries. But the Muslims are up in hams, insisting that every student must wear a hijab. So is this, a, because this is something you hear in the North, but now we are hearing it increasingly in Oyo State via this portal called Murik, uh, headed by one Ishak Akitola. So, what are you then making then of this fight between the okay, like, Christian? Okay, you know, like, yeah. Okay, like the, go the governor wanted to return schools to is it Christian missionaries or Muslim? Yeah, missionaries? yeah. Well, you know, the Muslims are not missionaries now, so a bit to the Christian missionaries okay. who originally <laughs> had the schools. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a problem. And I think, you know, you, they have uh, more Muslims, right? I think so, yes. It's going to be a problem. And... But marginally, may maybe not significantly. Yeah, yeah, but it's like maybe 60, maybe 55, yeah. 45. Yeah, sort of, yes. Okay, so I think it's going to be a problem, you know. But I don't know why uh, this hijab tells, you know, I think the Supreme Court has a rule about this something about hijab. I don't know. There was a time. It, this, yes, yeah. yes. Remember when that lawyer went to court dressed like yeah. a babalawo? Because yeah. the Supreme Court ruled that everybody should have the freedom to dress in hijab, both to work and to school. So, yeah. uh, and then that lawyer then went as a babalawo to court to mock that judgment. Well, uh, that is just an open threat. I will advise the governor to do what he feels is right, you know, from a broader uh, societal perspective, for societal perspective. So if he feels it is right and it will accelerate uh, the level of illiter literacy, the literacy level in, uh, in his state, he should, he should adopt the policy. And is this, that is his state, you know, uh, nobody can take it away from him. So that is what I, I suggest he should do, you know. But then uh, I don't think that 
I, I think well, the Yoruba Muslims are they are more, they are liberal, uh, they are more liberal. Yeah, that that's uh, that, that, that's what yeah. made me bring this story because this the tonality of this story is more something we hear from the north. But we are hearing yeah, yeah. it increasingly in Yoruba land, especially within the Oyo yeah, It will not. It will not make. Uh, it will not make much. It will not make much fire. You know, they should. The governor should do what he feels is right. If he feels that returning schools to the missionaries, you know, we improve, improve the quality of education in his state. He should do that. Education is a fundamental. Uh, education is a, a a necessity for every for every generation. So if he feels that returning schools to missionaries will improve the quality of education in his state, I encourage him to do to do that, you know. That is the least of our problems. So, so. Oh, oh, all right, brilliant. Well put. So so thank you, well put. So that's Saki Fada kicking things off. So Saki, for reasons of time, let me go on from you to Baba Kure, who hopefully is still there. Uh Baba Kure, are you still there? Okay, let me go on to Ajan Le Koko, who, who, who almost certainly will be there. So, so thank you, Ajan Le Koko. So, Ajan Le Koko, so to, to, the, to the thing then, uh, the uh, alarm being raised by um, Kingsley Mogalu, that's the central bank, they are printing uh, money that is not backed up by anything. So, we saw this, uh, it was quantitative easing in America, but it is voodoo money in Nigeria. So what are you there making then of this paper money? Sorry, sorry, here? sorry. Ajale Koko, you, you've never showed your face in this platform. <laughs> uh, well, neither have you, neither have you, Osaki. <laughs> have you, Osaki? <laughs> <laughs> Look at, can't you call him for black? You see? <laughs> Zaki, how are you? Uh, fine, uh, fine. We didn't see you yesterday. Hope everything yeah, is good. Yeah, I was very busy yesterday. Very, very busy. Right. But I, I watched the video after after the whole thing. Like I went to YouTube to watch the video. Oh. You know, though, though I didn't finish, you know. Uh, yes, it's that. always too. You see, but not, not why we are saying it's always too long. But uh, yeah, yeah uh, to, to, <laughs> to you, Ajan Le Coco. All right, nice to have you back. All right. Um, let me say good morning, afternoon, evening to our listeners around the world, wherever you are. Um, click on the like button, share, and subscribe. Um, look, one man, uh, what difference is it going to make? We already have a lot of voodoo money in the in circulation. So, um, but uh, on the serious note, um, so, so sorry, Ajan Lekoko, with your permission, let me just let, let me just uh, uh, share 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 uh, this with uh, Saki. So Saki, the, the, you you ask for it. Uh, so at here it is. Uh, so if you wonder what Ajan Lekoko looked like, that's Ajan Lekoko when he was reporting for the uh, for the platform as a citizen reporter. Oh, went to move. Oh, this is Ajan Lekoko. <laughs> so 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 that so that's Ajan Lekoko. Not only has he shown his face, he does it in he does citizen reports sometimes. So back to Ajan Lekoko, our citizen reporter Ajan Lekoko. <laughs> well, you covered you cover the face there very well. Uh, that, that was, was during that COVID was... now. That was during okay. COVID. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Well, <laughs> You see, um, this administration, just as we know, um, it is good that um, uh, Mugbalu is bringing this to uh, bringing this uh, news to everybody uh, for us to know uh, how this administration uh, continues to destroy our economy. It's unfortunate that we have a central bank governor that um, we support them with, uh, I mean, by surrendering the uh, sovereignty of uh, the central bank, you know, to the manipulation of the administration in order to make things uh, uh, 
I mean, package uh, the economy as if uh, economy is still running good. You know, it, that's very unfortunate. Uh, the central bank governor, uh, for what is done, is uh, legal uh, and uh, at the same time, is the, the advert effect on the economy uh, is going, it's, it's, it's going to be very, very grievous. Uh, we know the impact is going to make and the negative impact is going to have on the economy. The, the inflationary rate uh, will go higher and uh, uh, that will follow, further kill the uh, value of the currency. So, uh, it may feel the, um, as the central bank government has done a lot of shady deals uh, with this administration uh, that is not uh, putting our economy in the right direction. Uh, it may feel the, as the one in charge of, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think it's in charge of uh, the monetary uh, management of the economy. Uh, so it is, uh, it's not fit to be there. And for him to be um, IMF, immediately, under immediately, he has borrowed this federal government so much money that the IMF is warning him that he um, uh, should stop it. Otherwise, if he continue to borrow without anything, you know, to uh, back that borrowing, the economy will further, uh, you know, go down. So, but this impunity um, uh, practices uh, by a, a mid uh, it's, it's very worrisome, and uh, we can see it's telling on the economy. The Naira is losing value every day. Immediately, if uh, we, we, we all know what it did against that, uh, what do you call that, uh, Aboki? He accused Aboki, they went after Aboki, that uh, the... Uh, the uh, Aboki is responsible for the devaluation of the of the currency due to his uh, uh, speculation on uh, uh, the Naira exchange, you know, between uh, uh, bank rate and you know black market rate. So they went after him, and after that, what happened? The Naira value, you know depreciated against uh, continue to depreciate against uh, against dollar and uh, so so that tells us that if they are on wrong economic measure if their own wrong um, uh, 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 monetary um, certain back uh, wrong monetary measure that is killing the value of the naira so uh, it's very bad. It just shows that uh, they have anything anymore to defend the economy, to, uh, you know, defend the Naira. And uh, we are going to see more of this. It, it's going to continue, and uh, the consequences on the economy will be more grievous. And we, should, we, we Nigerians should be, be prepared for harder time ahead of us. It is it, it, it's, it's, it's dangerous, this practice by a uh, with impunity. It's very dangerous. All right. All right. Thank you. So, Adaleko, I want to show you something. Uh, you know, in Nigeria, there's nothing that we do better than to, to blame others for something that we've invested on ourselves, and especially to blame family members, to blame uh, uh, ancestral something or the other, ancest ancestral cause. And then if you are in a polygamous uh, family, you blame the other wife, etc. So we do a lot of that in Nigeria, uh, Ajanle Koko. But really, a lot of it uh, uh, 
we have to take responsibility for the blame for 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 the things that happen in our lives uh, so this is what is leading me to say all that i want you to look at this and then tell me what you what you think look at this so it's the girl that's in focus she pregnant yeah about about seven eight months but what's she doing can you see what she's doing she's putting her hand in the mouth what's, what's that she's smoking a bowl or something can you see the smoke are you serious you know that's it now why pregnant are you serious as I say, it is on your screen. You got wrapped in oh, Buddha. Anyway, she might be, uh, she might be um, mentally um, disturbed. Yeah, she might be mentally disturbed. She might be one of those uh, mad people that walk around the street. She yeah, like she, mad. She, she's well dressed. Yeah, she, well, she might be mentally disturbed. We have seen a lot of them like that in Lagos that are mentally disturbed, carry pregnancy, and they walk around all day, all night. They sleep on the street, and uh, you know, sometimes some people, uh, you know, uh, out of mercy, we go and give them good clothes to change and stuff like that. So, uh, a normal person will not do that. A normal person will not do that. It's, I think it's she's. Quite, uh, it's quite disturbing, isn't it? Yeah, I, I exactly. hate, like, you know, I've seen that once or twice, and I couldn't help myself but to go up to a total stranger and say, Look, man, you shouldn't really be doing that. And yeah. then they'll just, they'll yeah. just look at you funny that get it, lost. A, a normal people. person in our land yeah. will not do that. Publicly, she might do that, um, you know, behind the door, but, uh, you know, publicly on the street, a normal person. <laughs> except except if uh, god, god grant that child mercy oh, but uh, if anything happens now it will be mama motil is mama motil she looked at me funny eh, uh, yeah, last time yeah. and that is what caused it not that you were smoking it go all the way through the presidency yeah, yeah that's uh that is that is that is bad you know <laughs> all right still within that space of puda we're in return of schools to missionaries you shall sleep no more islamic group gives uh, uh governor makinde quit notice so muric of course no surprises and makinde wanted to return the because we know the one thing we know we know from we've known from examples within nigeria space is that the missionaries they often run the schools best but then of course uh this um this phenomenon now that we already know from for the north is now finding its way to the southwest um Rajan Le Koko. um that guy is an extremist and is trying, number one is an extremist. He is APC sympathizer, if not supporter. And uh, he's been trying to spread his own Islam uh, with uh, trying to spread his own Islam uh, in Yoruba land with uh, extremism against Christianity. Everything that this guy has said in the past and what he's doing now is an effort for him to spread Islam, you know, in Yoruba land with that as a measure to counter Christianity, you know, in Yoruba land. Uh, but um, he doesn't know that he's doing it in the wrong way. I would like to remind us of one of those uh, comments he made uh, recently, in some few months ago that Yoruba have never produced a Muslim leader in the history of Yoruba land. He was making reference to Obasanjo, making reference to 
Awolowo, making reference to even of Shibaji. And uh, he used that uh, uh, occasion to promote Tinubu that this is the first time that we are having a Muslim, that uh, a Muslim, you know, to lead us in Yoruba land. And therefore, we should back him up. We should support him. We should do all this. So I'm not surprised that he's trying to speak or trying to antagonize uh, uh, your state government, Sheyi uh on his efforts to transfer this school to the missionary. We know that uh, missionary knows how to manage the school administration very well. So, and that is what the government is trying to do, trying to return them to missionary so that they can manage the school well. And government can save some money too, you know, uh, and divert it into other sector, developmental sector, you know, returning them to school, it will lessen the body on the government in, you know, financing, uh, you know, that school, because everything is going to be the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, the missionary will take charge and managing it well, we administer everything and bring it up to a better standard you know, but uh, this guy is just an extremist. Nobody, people should not care about him. They should just leave him alone. And that's why he never stopped, because a lot of uh, Muslim leader does not support what he's doing. But he continue to do this thing, um, you know, to promote Islamic extremism in Yoruba land. And I don't think uh, uh, he, he doesn't realize that... Uh, we Yoruba people are very accommodating, um, we, even though uh, uh, there is no most, there is no family that doesn't have uh, Christian, Muslim, and even some of the traditional worshippers. We have them, so we are not extremists. So um, it, it's just trying to, you know, promote Islamic extremism in Yoruba. But, but he's been doing that for a while now, but uh, my fear is that he will start to succeed because uh, there will be a point where he will just happen upon what uh, the mass of the Muslims think is an injustice, and by that he will rally a troop around him. And the moment he starts to ignite that uh, I am Muslim, I am Christian in Yoruba land, that is the beginning of the end because um, we're not really built that way, but this guy is trying to turn us that way. Oh, but yes, you're right. Uh, it's, it, that is why he never stopped. He is trying to, uh, you know, continue to promote his uh, extremism, uh, you know, um, so that he can win more people on his side. But unfortunately, um, I don't think it's winning because notable Islamic uh, scholars and uh, leaders in Yoruba land uh, doesn't. Uh, uh, support him in what he's doing um you know i think everything he's doing is one to promote extremism number two to support apc uh you know to take over the state because he's an apc guy he always been speaking in favor of apc uh, uh most of the time when he speak on political matter it's always in favor of apc so uh but the most important thing that our people should do, particularly Islamic leader, the number one Islamic leader in the state, what they need to do now is to stand up against this guy, speak against him, that they are not in support of him. Let Muslim in that state know that he's on his own. We are not in support of uh, uh, um, Islamic radicalism. Yoruba, we Yoruba are same people. People can practice any religion they, they, they like. And therefore, all this campaign, all this uh, extremism should, should not uh, be taken serious by people. So if they counter him, then a lot of Muslims can see 
that um, is on its own and uh, they will not take him serious. But if they leave him alone, just like you say, one man, and he continues to do this, um, you know, year in, year out, whether we like it or not, you've been winning some people to his side, particularly this time around that uh, we have uh, economic problem, joblessness, some people for not doing anything, for being jobless, can just uh, turn into his, uh, his camp. Uh, particularly if they are enticed by money or something like that. Because some people could be promoting him behind the scenes, giving him money, sponsoring him. So, and, um, you know, uh, it, it, but Islamic leaders in that state should stand up and speak against his extremism. So that can checkmate him and, uh, you know, um, stop the spread of his uh, uh, dangerous campaign. That's the way I see it, Mama. All right, brilliant. Well put. So, so to the space, Ajan Le Koko. Uh, so the soldiers, they were driving against traffic. The police, of course, then stopped them to say that, no, th this is against the law. And having for having the audacity, now this was in a joke and tournament area. So having the audacity then to stop them from breaking the law, the soldiers disembarked from their vehicle, weighed upon the four police officers. One of them escaped, they got two and beat one to death. So that's Nigeria, nothing has changed. Uh, mm. It's just unbelievable, isn't it? You see, those uh, Nigeria is a lawless state. No, the can was right to call it a zoo. By the way, it is a zoo. Nigeria is a lawless state. Um, I think the training they give the military is to see themselves above other uniform um, um, people, to always see themselves above them, see themselves as the real uniform men, and others are just civilian in uniform. And therefore, if they cross their way, they should cross them and teach them a lesson and let them know that they are just civilian in uniform and not, and not real soldiers like them that can go to war, fight or, you know, um, fight to defend the country. You know, I think that is the training to, they give them. And um, they don't hesitate at any time to demonstrate it. Anytime they are in the public, if a civilian crosses any civilian that you know stand up in their way they will crush that person the same with police officer they will cross it they will cross that person that is the training they give them so those police officers i think they should have known that that they cannot stand in the way of the military anytime military uh, on the Anytime they are they are on the street or wherever they are, they should not they should not cross their way. They should not they are there. They know that. So those guys, part of the fact that they are doing their job to stop them while driving on the on the wrong way, they should have handled it better to let those people go because it never happened and it will never happen in the future for soldiers to allow police to cow them. It will never happen. So the one that fled, he knew what the consequence is gonna be. And that's why he ran away. But unfortunately, the other one that they were able to grab, um, is unfortunately that uh, they terminated his life. Military have done that several times, several places, in, in our country, they don't they don't regard police as anything. They see them as common civilian in the uniform. So um, it, it, those officers should have uh, handled it better. They should have let them go because they are they are they are killed and go. They are mad people. They don't care. That is the training given them. That is the training. That they, 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 that's the way they are trained. They are bulldozers. When they are going, 
nothing should cross their way. Anything that, any attempt by anybody, anything whatsoever, the training given to them is to just crush that thing. And they would demonstrate that anytime, any day. Look at what happened in Nodi during the time of Abbasanjo when they killed just one officer. Look at the way they level down. This idea, of, this idea of kill and go is now something that has to be addressed frontally. Kill and go. Yeah. What do you mean kill, and, they go? Are kill and go? Yeah, they that don't kill and go. That is their mentality. That is the training given to them that every other uniformed man are not soldiers. They are just bloody civilians in uniform and never allow them to challenge you anywhere, anytime, any day. Any one of them that dare you, just crush them. That is the training given to them. And the police officers, I don't know why, they, 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 they have done this to police officers several times. So, but the, the guy that left, that ran away, he knew what is going to happen. That's why he ran away. But the second one that was uh, beaten to death is just unfortunate that uh, he, he couldn't, uh, he, he couldn't, he couldn't uh, run away from the scene. He will have uh, escaped death now. But you know, it, 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 I hope that the military authority will um, will look for those guys that are involved in this. Uh, the, the, the massless killing of these police officers and, uh, you know, uh, allow the full wrath of the law uh, to take, uh, you know, the course on them. And I believe they will do that because they are the one, according to that report, that took that officer to police, I mean, to um, hospital. I believe they will have taken their, um, their identity uh, in that uh, military hospital uh, when they drove them and they uh, uh, they will they will, they will get them they will get them they, uh, uh, you know some of them in recent time have done a lot of uh, um, 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 uh, bad thing like this they were they were they were put on trial and they were you know uh, sentenced to some kinds of uh, you know uh, imprisonment or maybe uh, there was one in uh, on those state that raped a lady you know, it's just, they are just driving and they stopped us very cool. And the, and the soldier invited the lady from the vehicle, let me see you. And then he, he dragged her into the booth. I went to, you know, have, um, a, 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 I mean, rape her. And after that, you know, in order to cover up their, their 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 bad um, attitude. Then I think they they killed that girl. So, but unfortunately for them, uh, other students saw the incident of how they dragged that gun to the booth. So the students around that area now started demonstration, and uh, they later found that that girl had been killed. So they were they 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 were able to fish out those um, military officers and. Uh, they were decommissioned and they were put on they were put on trial. So I hope they will do the same. They'll be able to identify these guys and then uh, decommission them and then uh, you know put them on uh, on trial and uh, let the justice uh, take its course on them. Oh, oh, all right, brilliant. So thank you, Ajale Koko. So for time, let me go from you, uh, Ajale Koko, to Ifeyi, and then I'll round up after that. So um, before I go on to Ifeyi, by the way, uh, can I have ask our people to 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 like the stream? So click on the like button uh, just uh, to help with the YouTube algorithm. You know we are pushing for the likes to go up. So if you haven't clicked on the like button and you have no real reason not to click on the like button, then you have every reason to click on the like button. So if it doesn't offend you not to click on it, then just click on it. And if you're not subscribed already, do that in the same motion. So click on like and subscribe, the summary of that long-winded plea. So from that to Ifeni. So Ifeni, you're up next. And to that space that Ajane Koko just left, the soldiers beating a, a, a police officer to death are for asking them not to drive the wrong way uh, in traffic. Yeah, um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think I, I've not even heard about the the story of the police officer. Yeah, <coughs> of it's, the, a, it's the, an everyday the, occurrence. It's a, it's a usual thing, though. But carry on, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's right for military people, personnel, to beat a police officer to death for driving on the wrong way because that, first of all, that's not their duty. And the duty of people on the road is controlling the road and the way people drive on the road. That's the duty of the federal road safety, you know. So I think it's actually wrong and it's unconstitutional for them to do something like that. They should be prosecuted as in, for me personally, that's what I think. So the military police should have like court martialed the guy or something like that. So that's what me I think, but I think it's totally wrong. Well, we, we know the level of impunity in Nigeria. So I guess anything goes until we can service the issue in this country, then when a big fix for now, for, for now that's what me I think. But that's totally wrong. All right, brilliant. So the article that is offending uh, a lot of people, Sam Omosaye, uh, so he wrote that article, of course, I'm sure you would have heard of it, the obituary article. So off the yeah, back of yeah. that, uh, yes, yeah, so, I, so I, it's, I it's, it's so hold on, hold on. Uh, off the back of the article, he is now receiving death threats to the point that his family are now pleading that the life of the journalist should be spared. So why are you making then of the response to that article by the obedience? First of, first, first of all, how would that journalist, he, the journalist is actually a Tinubu journalist, let's be sincere. He, he posted the article on the Nation newspaper. First of all, why would he tag a, a, an article he wrote obituary? What is the meaning of obituary? Obituary is a, is a notification of somebody of death, someone that has died. So he's indirectly calling um, Peter Obey and his supporters, people that are dead. So that's why they had to go for him. So he already no, but, but he's speaking politically no, now, not physically. I think I, I think people are intelligent enough to. He's announcing the obituary of uh, Obi's political journey, not the Obi as a person. You know that. Yes, uh -huh. I know that. So those people too, the Obi, the Obi uh, supporters are also giving it back to him. He dies the death of his own political, his own journalism career. But for me personally, I think that's wrong. He shouldn't have started playing dirty because he knows this obedience. Some of them, there is a violent state department for the obedience. So they are ready to give it to him hot, hot. And you know, it, it's just crazy because right now, from what I'm seeing, every party is just focusing on Labour Party and their candidates, you know, because I don't know why they cannot just focus on their own candidate and try to sell their candidate. It's, it's because they are so afraid of Obi now. They are afraid of Obi. Yeah, and I have to tell and you it's, one And it's growing popularity. Is, the the, yeah, the movement is gradually leaving the the social media space and getting to the grassroots. From one way I can tell you, to a fact, it hasn't gotten there yet. You understand, but they started living there. You know, there are some pockets of movement in Katsina, Gombe, Taraba that me have confirmed. I don't know about another place, so, so that's the ones me I know. I'm in contact with some northern people, they are the ones giving me the information there. So, 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 so because so your think... friend, because your your friend from NYC camp is supposed to be in, in Gombe, that that makes is that no, 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 you're your getting friend me from right. NYC no, no, camp. No, no, no. No, those are, I'm talking about Northerners, Hausa people, Fulani people, and the other. Uh, have we lost you? Oh, okay, Let, let's go to, let's go to Fat, Fatumata, uh, it's a Fat, Fatua Mata Diop, Fatua Mata Diop, uh, that doesn't sound especially Nigerian, that name, uh, hello. Hello. Um, yeah, yes, yes, I can hear you, sorry, how do I pronounce your name? Fatumata, Fatumata job. Fatumata job. Is that a Nigerian yes, name? Sir. No, I'm a Senegalese. Oh, okay. I, I did think so because the Diop is a francophone. Um, it's a francophone uh, name. So good to have you. Yes, I mean, do, do you follow Nigerian politics? Do you have any commentaries on what we're talking about? Uh, it's my first time to join here, and I really wanted to know. <laughs> uh, what is all about and uh, 
Because the name I saw there is the name of a sister, so I don't know whether she's the one that really added me here. Hello, woman. Oh, yeah. Oh, ho hold on. Um. Uh. Yes. We we is it's a it's it's um it's a streaming platform as you can see, and we talk about yes. uh ma matters relating to Nigerian politics mainly, but our uh, black issues in general. But usually we focus around our Nigerian politics uh, related sort of uh, issues. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I understand. Uh, all, all right. It's my, uh, but, it's my first time I'm joining here. Uh, uh, where, where are you joining us from? Sorry? Where are you joining us from? Where, where, where are yeah, you? I'm in, the, I'm, I'm in the Gambia. Actually, I'm the in the Gam Gambia. Oh, wow. Wow. They have internet in the Gambia. I didn't know they have internet in the Gambia. Yes, they have internet internet in the Gambia. They have electricity as well in the Gambia. Yes, sir. Ah, wow. And they have yes. cars. Do they have cars in the Gambia? Cars? Yes. Yes, sir. Is it still Yaya Jame? Who is it? Who's there now? Is it Yaya Jame? No, it's not Yaya Jame. It's, it's, it's Adam Abaro. Is he doing a good job? Are you happy with him? Yeah, uh, really. Yeah, he's trying. He's trying. He's trying. You you know something I've noticed? There's a lot of black Americans moving to the Gambia. Have you noticed that? Black Americans? Yes, moving to the yeah. Gambia. Have you noticed that? Yeah, like from which part? Which from which countries? From the United States, a lot of uh, Americans, black ones, move into the Gambia. Have you noticed that? Yeah, we have some here, yes. O all right. And, and what, what do you do in the Gambia? What, what do you do? What do you do in the Gambia? And what is the economy? What is the economy based on? What? Okay, what I do in the Gambia? Yes, what do you do in the Gambia? I work in children ministry, taking care of orphans. Oh, brilliant. Good job. Good job. Well done. So that's excellent. Um, what, what is the economy of Gambia? What do, they, what do they do? What's the natural resources? What do you have in the Gambia for export? Gambia, uh, they do farming, a lot of farming. What, what, what product? What, what do they farm? Different things, cassava, bananas, oranges, you, maize, groundnuts. You have a large tourism industry in Gambia, don't you? You have a large tourism uh, industry. Yes. So if, if I want to come and visit Gambia for a week, uh, what would I do? What are the things to do? Where should I stay? Where would, what should I do? And how would I how would I enjoy myself for a week in uh, Gambia? What so uh, tourism for a week? Tell us what to do. Okay, what you need to do? Yeah, you need to you you will stay in the hotel. There's hotel. Also, there's some there's some places they do for renting. Like Airbnb. Yeah. Have, yeah, they're good. Off. Yeah, sorry. Just give me one minute. Let me just do something. I'm coming, sir. Oh, oh, all right. Oh. One you, know, there of, you know, there are a lot of Nigerians there. Nigeria developed that country. Nigerians, yes. I wanted to ask her. Yes. Oh, that, that would have been our uh, second. Uh, I did not got it wrong, man. That that it, would have and been. And there's a lot of full. It's a full and it's space. I I think uh, the Gambia. Yeah, that uh, that would have been uh, um, oh, another country for Nigerians in West Africa. There. Oh, 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 all right. Uh, back back to you. Um, back to you. Um, uh, uh, Ifeni. Uh, we were glad for that intermission. Uh, just uh, uh yes. Yeah, so, so back to Ifeni. Yeah. Yes, like I was saying that um, there are actually people in the north that are actually campaigning for the obi that they actually they have northern obedience so they are campaigning for p2b so they are there so that's what i'm saying so for some some to go and make that article it's just provoking them and they just went out 
Pro provocative uh, enough for them to threaten his life. I don't think they are really threatening his life because hey, his family are them begging him. them not to kill him. We know what the obedience he, are like now. Are they not hypobians? Yeah, no, they are not hypobians. Please, uh -huh. one man, I've heard you several times making those claims. You should try and differentiate hypob people from people that are supporting and people be as candid because the obedience of all they are all tribes in Nigeria. You see them from the north, east, okay. west, south, everywhere, even a dope, um, rivers, north, you know, so we try and differentiate them from, from that. That is what we have noticed. So I guess, I know, although sometimes, you know, a lot of them are really angry with the situation of Nigeria, so they are just venting their anger on anybody that is trying to um, downplay them or try to prevent them from achieving their goal, which is try to see people be win the presidential election. So I guess that's just it. But for the fact of the fact is, you know, I think if APC is coming with their own dirty games, the obedient people are actually coming out with their own dirty games too, because they are trying to match up with what the government has. You know, the gov the, the APC government, they have the money, they have other resources. They are trying to use their numbers to see if they can match up and you know close the gap. So every any anything that comes up, they put in the card there and try to make sure, you know oh, oh, right. that they uh, actually uh, achieve what, what all right. Want. All right, thank you, uh Ifeni. Let's get back to Fatua Mata uh, before we run down. So are you back with us, Fatua Mata? Yes, I'm back. Uh, oh, oh yeah, so we were trying to get to know the Gambia a bit through you. Uh, but do you have a Nigerian population in the Gambia? Do you have Nigerians in the Gambia? And are they popular yes. in the Gambians? And do Gambian women prefer Nigerian men to their local men? Okay, we have we have a lot of Nigerians here. Yes. Yes, we have a lot of Nigerians here. Do they make all the money and get all the women, the Nigerian men? Whether they used to do what? I said, are they making? Uh, do, are they rich, the Nigerians, and do they get all the women? Do ne, do the Nigerian men in the Gambia do they get all the women? All the women. Yes. Do the do Gambian women do they like Nigerian men? Yes, there's some there's some there's some of them married to Nigerian, and some of them married to Senegalese too. Just as, as for me, I'm a Senegalese and I married to a Nigerian. Ah, so you're lucky. Uh, is he, uh, did, did you marry, is he an Igbo man or a Yoruba man, your husband? No, oh, he's from, he's from Edo State, not, uh, not, they are not Igbo. No, no, yes. Edo State, uh, but... yeah, from Auchi. Oh, okay. Uh, have you ever been to Nigeria? Have you, has it taken you home? No, not yet. Okay. Are, are you looking forward to visiting Nigeria? Yes, by God's grace. So, do you follow Nigerian movies, Nigerian, uh, Nigerian uh, music? Uh, is that your favorite? Yes, I do watch Nigerian films, especially Christian films. Sorry, we can't hear you. I, I do watch Nigerian, especially the Mount Zion, the Christian films. Oh, are you a Christian? Yes, by his grace. Uh, all right, that's good. Do you follow Nigerian music and who is your favorite? Nigerian music? Yeah. Uh, really, the, the only music I used to listen to is, uh, is gospel music. Wow. Yes, sure. I, is your husband a pastor? Yes, he's a pastor. Yes, I guess. Uh, and what, what, is the, what is the name of your ministry? Is a Reform National Church of the Sahel. All right, that's good. And uh, what what's the size of the congregation? Is it a big church? Yes, it's a is a big church. Cause at the same time we have children ministry, so we're having about six orphanages in the Gambia. Also, uh, two don't... orphanages in Guinea Bissau. In Guinea -Bissau. Okay, so, so you are international. Yes, by God's grace, yes. 
but the predominant religion in the Gambia is Islam. So how many Christians do you have in, because it's, it's a Muslim country, isn't it, the Gambia? Yes, it's a Muslim country. Sorry, are you, are you, are you, are you a Christian or a Muslim? I'm, I'm a Christian. Okay. So we have Christians and we have Muslims. As for me, I was, I was a Muslim before and being saved by the grace of God. Yes, and because your first name yes. is a Muslim name, Fatua Mata, that's a, that's a Muslim name. Um, yes, my, 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 my father is a, my father is a Muslim and my mom is a Christian. Oh, oh, oh well, no, that's, that's good. So I was going to ask if there's religious tension. Is there religious tension in uh, the Gambia? Do you have problems with Muslims and Christians? Not, not, not really like other countries. Yes, the only, the only, the only side that have problems like uh, those that are give their life to Christ when their families are not Christian, the, they are being persecuted in different ways. So not really problem like fighting or other things like that. Oh, 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 all right. Uh, and uh, what's the population in Gambia? Is it about 2 million there about? Is it a, it's a small country, isn't it? Yeah, it's a small country, but not really small like that. But it's a small country. Oh, okay. And it has a lot of coastline. It has a lot of beach, doesn't it? They have a lot of beach in, uh, in the Gambia. Yes. Yes. They have, they have a lot of beach in the Gambia. And you have a lot of uh, European tourists that come to the Gambia, especially for the young uh, girls and the young boys. D is that a problem? These Europeans that come, uh, they call them sex tourism. Is this something that is identified as a problem in the Gambia, the sex tourism by, the, by uh, uh, old Europeans? Yeah, really, I don't know. I don't know much about that. But I can do some inquiry and ask about that. But I'm not. I don't. I don't know a lot about that. Oh, oh, okay. So, is it your ambition to visit Nigeria? And would you, at some point, like to move there and live? Sorry. I said, do you? Is it your wish to visit Nigeria at some point? Yes. I wish so. And would you like to live there? Sorry, give me the rush. I, I said, would you like to live there? Would you like to move there to live? Meaning to stay in Nigeria? To stay in Nigeria, yes. Yeah, I don't know what tomorrow brings, but what I know, I'm married to a Nigerian, so when it's time, if God says I have to be in Nigeria, then that means. I have to. All right. And um, how did you meet your husband? How did you meet? Yeah, we met in the Gambia here. We met in the Gambia here. R right. So was he preaching and then he came up to you? It was preach was it pre preaching and then he came up to you? No, he was not preaching really. Because... He do, he do like carpentry, apart from the pastor work, carpentry and the first tree, he makes offers. Uh, okay. Yes. So, so did, did, did you ask him to make you a sofa and then he asked you to marry, to marry him? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really ask you to make a sofa for me. I went out, I was on my way to the bank and, uh, that day, I just wanted to collect some money at the ATM, and the ATM was not working. So I'm supposed to go to the Senegambia side to collect some money at the long side. At the... My mind did not just decide for me to go that side. So I said, okay, let me just go to the GT Bank. So on my way going there, when I was coming back, so I made that he was bringing out the sofa with his workers. 
So I greeted him. I said, good evening, sir. Are you the one that's making this sofa? I said, yes. So I said, we are having a sofa in the, at home, and I would like to change it. So he was busy going. He just so, he was sorry, going. Sorry, uh, uh, yeah. fa 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 it, it, when you saw him, was it the sofa that you saw, or you saw? Oh, this this is a handsome man. I have to I have to talk to him. Is that look at that? Eh? And then you just use sofa. You say, oh, look at this no, handsome no, no. man. Eh? No, 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 no. I did not even I did not even look at. I don't. I did not even look at his face. <laughs> I did not look at his face. And I did not even think about Ansom. Oh, okay, carry on, continue. So, so what happened? So you saw him bringing out the sofa, and then carry on. Yes, and then after then he was giving me the number, and he was rushing, going back to his workshop because me, I was just passing by. So I was calling him for him to come and check the sofa at home, but because he was very busy after one week like that so then so i prefer to stop the story here maybe next time <laughs> oh, oh, all right brilliant so so that it was is getting to uh so so f thank you for, for, for Twema. It, it's just um it's fascinating to have somebody like you join us because usually what we have is just nigerians talking politics and t t talking about how much we hate the politicians in our country uh do, do you do you know anything at, at all about nigerian politics and do you have an impression about it, Nigerian, Nigerian politics? I don't really know much about Nigerian politics. And uh, is it only about politics that you used to discuss in this platform? It, or yes. do you have other things? It's mainly politics, mainly politics. OK. Uh, I understand. Uh, uh, Oh, 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 all right, all right, brilliant. Good, good to meet you, uh, 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 Fatwa Mata. So, Fatwa Mata Diop. So, that's Fatwa Mata Diop. Yeah, Fatwa Mata, Fatwa Mata. Fatwa Mata Diop. So, that's Fatwa Mata Diop joining us from, uh, uh, from the Gambia. So, so, thank you for joining us and join us again. Uh, so, we, we were coming towards the end when you joined us. So uh, let, let, we, we are closing the session uh, uh, right now, but uh, if, you, if you have ever a chance, join us again, and we will not probe you too hard uh, the next time. It's just the fascination of uh, meeting somebody new. So, so, um, so let me get back to Ifeni, who was uh, uh, fleshing out her position. And then uh, after Ifeni, then we start to round up. So Ifeni, back to you. Uh, you were talking about, oh, of course... Uh, uh? Yeah, sorry, one more. Just to know how intelligent you are to... Mm -hmm. To be able to decipher people's tonality, you know, from the way if I talks, do you think he's from the southeast, from the from his tone? No, no, I think it's from the south south. Is uh, yeah, 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 very intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the south south now. Oh, are you trying to say that the supporters they spread beyond the goal line? No, no, it's, not, it's to, not what uh, I'm trying to say. I just want to know guy. whether you. I just want, want uh, to know whether you are having difficulty knowing people's. Uh, people's uh, origin based on their assets. No, no. Uh, if, if any is from the South, South it's probably from uh, River State thereabouts, uh, I suspect. Uh, no, no, I no, no. One man. I'm not from River State. Where, where are you from? from Delta. Delta. It's from Delta. Uh, no, no. See, now, Delta Ibo. Now, Ibo. It's a Delta Ibo. You're from where? I'm from, I'm from Anambra State. I'm not You're not from Delta. Anambra. Who yeah, told you you are from Anambra? You are not from Anambra. I'm what from, are you? Wait, 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 wait. Why did I say? I'm eh? from Anambra. I grew up in Port Harcourt. I'm from okay. Anambra State. I grew we are up in we are, from, we are in Anambra State. I'm from Dunukofia. I'm from Dunukofia local government. We are in Dunukofia local government. Umunachi. Oh, yeah, 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 correct. Uh, but the, the, I know my place. It's not, it's not far from Abagana. It's not far from, yes, uh, what yes, do you yes. call it? To, um, um, Umudioka. It's not far from me. I'm from Anambra State. I don't well, grow up in Kotaku. Your tone is like, uh, like uh, South South now. Yes, that's because I grew up in Kotaku. Okay. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. uh, 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 yes. So 
Uh, if you grew up in Porta Court, then you wouldn't say Porta Court. You would say Pra Court they, because that's what they say. Pra Court. <laughs> they don't say Porta. They say Pra Court. You know, uh, uh, Pra Court. Pra Court. So, so yeah. Back to uh, the journalist that you want to be heard for writing ill about your governor. No, no, <laughs> no. So, so the truth is, I, I can't be heard that journalist. I can just. It's to me, it's just funny. But I think he he should be expecting it. But I don't. I don't think he's serious because he could have um, come out and given us evidence of the threat. So we, because they've said it, that those people who are threatening people, they should come out and post those evidence. So they'll go, go after those people who are threatening people's life and all that. They, they, to claim to be um, obedient. And, and anybody can really come out, actually, anybody can really come out and say that they have been threatened and all that. Just the same way. Um, real uh, mockery did his own too. So I just think they are just using it to create a, an impression that people who sub, who, who are supporters of um, P2B are um, what do you call them? They are violent or they are they are this one. Yeah, they are not one. violent. Are yeah, I don't think they are violent. So I don't when, when they are threatening mockery's daughter. No, I don't. He should show us proof now. There are other people that. And then they are threatening this journalist. They are threatening this journalist, threatening everybody. One one man, they are are still batified people and articulated people that threaten P2B supporters. They don't come out and start whining about it. They give it to them back to hot hot and them now chicken out and come out and you. (laughs) <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you know the thing that really is the is the lies that will be tell. That is what un, really unravels him. Which, when which of the down, lies? Which of them? Uh, everything he tells is a lie. Now, you do you not know? No, no, no. What my? Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, 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 hold on. Uh, hold I've on. I've done my research uh, on him. Oh, 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 be, oh, caught lying again. So he's going around telling us that the Nigerian uh, output about thirty billion uh, dollars. All the all the condensed figures by all the international expert, experts from fifty seven to sixty three billion dollars. So he's just plucking uh, figures from thin air. He tells us that he left uh what forty forty sixty billion dollars in uh, uh, naira uh, for his uh, successor. The successor said it's a lie. He left less than ten ten billion ten billion naira. So it's just lies after who lies after successor? lies. Uh, who is the who? successor? Uh, okay, listen to the listen to was, oh, okay, oh, 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 um, ob- Obiano. Um, yes, uh, well, Obiano. Yeah, that's yes, yes, yes. So, so, so actually, uh, I I went through that um, what the PDR whatever document, and I no. saw um, some of the information. You know, I, this is what no, I no, no, forget that. Listen he to gets, Obiano. Oh, gets, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen to Obiano in his own words. How much did he actually leave in the state coffers when he left as governor? And are you willing to publicly publish the bank verified statement to settle the matter once and for all? Yes. Yes. Not talking. Yes. The, uh, my predecessor left nine uh, million ca- billion cash, and uh, nine million, nine billion. Billion, nine billion cash, and uh, and uh, twenty-six point uh, twenty-five point six billion in uh, script issues. Th- these are sovereign wealth fund and shares in other banks. You know, if you put nine million to that, you get thirty-five point five billion, technically. You know, but he issued checks what over fifteen billion before he left, waiting for uh, for me to cross over before those checks started appearing. You know, so you can see it's a uh, timid leading uh, in accounting. That's what happened. So I, that, this is five fact. We have published it already. It's already in the social media. It's everywhere that what he left was thirty-five billion. Let me even tell you, if I were Not only here, publishing the figures. Publishing in the bank statement, will you? Would you Look, do? Our, our our accounts are properly audited. If they, you know, I, I have the largest funding from the donor agencies. They will not touch you with a long spoon if uh, they don't see your transparency. Okay. All right. So so do you see? Yeah, so, um, it, it tell us it left uh, sixty billion. The guy said he, li- he left thirty five billion. Uh, about uh, it, that is issued checks at uh, uh, in well in excess of fifteen billion. Which will just be honored, just as he's handing over to the guy. So, so it's just a, if you did, come on, man. Now, come okay, on. What, one man, wait, 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 what one man? Yes, those are just um, people talking. I've had okay. him talk, I've had yeah. people be talk. But what may I base my facts on are documents signed by the accountant general of the state. 
those are the things I can only base my proof from. And Colata, the last time I was on this page where he posted the site where you can go see those information. I went there and I saw it. It was fine. It was even 75 um, this thing, billion he left. Like, I don't even understand where people are coming up and making these things. My only but uh, but uh, Soludo said pretty much the same thing, that he is just plucking figures from thin air. Okay, now you're shooting me to uh, and, 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 when, and, and when people are saying these things, you start to issue death threats. Oh, no. See, one man. Soludo came and said something. Fine. Yes, he's a human being. He can make mistakes with his statistics. That one is there. That one is normal. It, everybody has, there is a level of threshold you can give for someone's error. But doesn't make the, um, a fact wrong when there are documents to back it up. It's just my own claim. I'm not supporting anybody. I'm just saying. What do you mean you're not supporting you anybody? You support to be now. Why do? Why? Why are you saying you're not supporting? Oh, no, no, you support no, no, to be. No, I. Oh yes, I am. I'm not. Saying I'm not uh, supporting him in that sense. What I'm saying is, um, when you're put, I'm being to be to be fair and neutral. You need to look at both sides, listen to both sides, and look at evidence that's been provided. So that's what I'm saying. I've seen evidence signed, and that's what I'll take. I won't take anybody's hearsay until they prove me with a document. That's why I've been sharing in that interview. Told him about docu um, the state, uh, what do you call it? Um, what is the statement of account? A document that's actually proving it. Because nobody will hold you. You can just say anything and somebody will just take it like that. But you need proof. That's all I'm just saying. That's the fact me I'm putting out there. So, so you find we should not believe, uh, we should not believe Obiano. Is that what you are saying? We should not believe what Obiano no, said. No, I will not. I don't see. We sh you should not even believe Obiano and Peter B what they say. You should believe the proof and the document that you see to verify what they are saying. That is my all I'm saying. Even me, when I heard they said he invested state funds into his family business, I went my own way and verified, and I found out that was a lie. And I have I even wrote an article on it self. On what I found out, I traced it down to the shareholders of his o own Obi, company. Obi himself confirmed that too. What are you saying? Obi well, confirmed he that. Said he he said that too. What are you saying? You find? I listen, listen. I saw the clip. He denied. He said he never invested state funds in his family business. He denied it. I listened to the clip. I saw it. People just take things you say out of context, and I've gone to search. Sub Miller Company and then in um, Interfax and um, Brewery Company. Next International is registered in London and in Nigeria. It was registered in 1988 in Nigeria, 1996 in London. So he, in, in, um, Next International invested in Interfax Brewery. Then Sub Miller owns 75.6% of Interfax Brewery and he invested the state funds in Sub Miller. Yes, in 2018, the, the, the shares peaked and it was up to a um, 72 point something billion dollars, a million dollars, sorry, million dollars, 72 point something million dollars at um, a specific rate. After a while, it dropped because of the economic crisis right now. So the, he, he's not as if he's lying. There are tracks you can find that, okay, at some point, the investment of the $20 million moved up to 72.6 or $5 million as of 2018. But due to some economic issues, the thing dropped and obviously it affected the shares. So that's what I'm saying. My own is I work with facts. I will, say, I will tell you the truth. He's no, he's no a cent. He has his lapses and whatever. But the only thing I can hold him, I can say for him is there's accountability of everything he has done. There are traces of it. That is all I'm saying. If you really stole funds or did this thing, you would have had EFCC chasing down right now that's going for elections. But there's nothing like that. That is all I'm saying. I'll give him benefit of doubt. You understand? Initially, I wasn't supporting him, but until I did my research. And that is what made me change my mind from um, article to P2B because I was following article before. And I've never said it on this case, but I'm just telling you now. It was my research that I did, truly. I won't lie. And when I did my own research on Tinubu, I saw a lot of things that I cannot, that I, I, I don't want to go into space and talk about it. And 
if I do an article of what I just <clears throat> researched on Tinubu, may I be scared of my own life, sir, because there's a lot of lot of things going on. So that's just all I'm saying. So that that that, that I can give you. Uh, uh, all right. So I've even done my own for sure already. Too. I've even done on show already, but I also being on show already, I discovered a lot of things about him that made sure it be in my head as a thought that okay, this man has some trade, but he needs to change the way he's approaching the politics. He needs to change it. And find so the only thing that is making you not supporting Bill the only thing that is making you not sure supporting Bill is your tribal allegiance to Peter Obiabi. No, 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 it's not that. See, I like Shore, but the thing is, I want to see him handle public funds. I want to see him in a capacity where he's, yes, he's an activist, he's good, he's against corruption. But I want to see him in a position where but, uh, give him this thing is not, and I want uh, to see what he does. Shore is not wanted by opposition. the... But Shore is not wanted by the EFCC, Peter Obi is. Yeah, no, 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 no. He's not wanted by you. You're not getting my point. It's not about him being wanted. Is and I want to see him. It's like an experience. I want to actually see what he can do. Yes, oh, all right. presidency might be asking for too much, but I think he's someone that can, if he arranges his part well, we can buy his market. Oh, all right, Fenya, I have to shut down here. Uh, so, so it's just really for for reasons of time. So we had that intermission with uh, Miss Diop from uh, from uh, the Gambia. Uh, a lot of people were a bit conflicted. They said I was uh, asking her uh, a bit to. Uh, there was nothing else I could ask her. She she doesn't know about Nigerian politics, so I had to ask her about herself. I mean, uh, did I was I out of uh, out of tune, uh, Ajani Well, uh, what was? Yeah. Uh, this thing that happened to this show. Why did you say one man? No, no, sorry. I think Ta Saki is already answering it. Yeah, Saki. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say, like, this thing that happened today, I'm very happy about it. It shows that uh, there are a lot of international admirers to this platform, you know? There, there it is. You know? They are just admiring it from every country. The message is passing through other countries, you know? I was and especially that, pleased that she's in the yes, Gambia, you know? That, yeah. that was why I actually kept quiet. I wanted to hear detail. I didn't even want her to go. The time he and even he was trying to talk to us about when we were trying having an opportunity <laughs> to hear from somebody, he was uh, wanting to do Peter B. Peter B. Is that not so the question? Were the questions <laughs> we are you are asking her is uh, is not too much, like it is just uh, about his five, they're just five, surface questions now, yeah, getting to you know you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, getting yeah. to know you sort of. And she, yeah, she, she also knew that those that uh. You are just access surface questions. And yeah, I think the, she enjoyed the, the, this, it. I'm sure she'll yeah, be back. The discussion was more on friendly uh, yeah. levels, you know. Mm. Uh, forget uh, the comments in the. Yeah, that's I saw, okay. I saw a lot of the comments. Yeah, yeah Obi and his friend Rebel Rousing. And they said, "No, are you toasting a woman? I'm not toasting. I'm a married man." <laughs> but uh, th thank you, um, thank you, Saki. So, so let me round off here, Saki, only so that we can reconvene in the evening. So I leave you here. One man, yeah. one man. Hold on, don't run away. Right. Maybe you need to be bringing some of these uh, issues that concerns uh, women. Some of these. Um, well, I suggested some it some time ago some, now, and you guys topic. said no. You, as, you remember I suggested it now, and you guys said no, that I should keep the focus on politics. So just uh, bring some topics that concerns uh, women's matter. Maybe we can have some more women to come on the show. You know, the last time you brought about... Uh, what did you, what is and, that? And then we about? had the American girl. That yeah, came, yeah, the yeah. Kara, or what's her name? So yeah. you should be bringing some topics that... Uh, can be attractive to women as as well you know sometimes maybe in the morning mm. so that uh, you know we can have more um intelligent women to come yeah, so and, if, if you're looking us. for somebody that like yeah. 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 maybe maybe zaki go. maybe zaki can get another second wife from there let's Look let's yeah, yeah. Zaki. Zaki, Zaki father. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, gentlemen. So we'll, we'll meet again in the evening and 